Hello and welcome to chapter 2. Uh, in this chapter we will be talking about motion along the one-dimensional line, otherwise known as 1D, and kinematics. All kinematics means is just motion. You know, kina means basically motion, um, you know, kinetic, things like that. Those are all um, descriptors for motion. So that's what we'll be talking about. So uh, we have here a um, set of data. It's been given to us. Um, it has a, um, you know, a time and position, basically minutes and meters, and we have a story of a student walking to school. The idea is that if you look at this long enough and hard enough, you can get an idea of what's going on. And when we look at it, we see that we have essentially three intervals that are going on. Uh, you got an interval up front that is um, the first three, or sorry, first uh, two two or three minutes here that are, um, you know, going at a certain pace, and I can look at the, the spacing between here and here and here and see what that pace is. Um, I can see that that pace gets smaller, right, these intervals get smaller as I go through the second phase, and then they get larger as I get through the third phase. So basically I have some idea that my spacing starts off medium, it gets small, and then um, and then gets large again. So that could look something like this, you know. I'm not going to keep too exact here, but um, so those are about the same intervals, and then the intervals are going to get smaller, and then my intervals are going to grow, or it's going to, sorry, be larger, and they're going to be larger than they initially were. Okay, and so I just created a motion graph down here on the bottom. Uh, using this data, one representation. I could also look at it numerically. I could find, you know, what these interval values are. You know, I can and find that. I see that's like 60, um, 60 meters per minute, um, and so on. And this is the motion diagram that we see from that. And again, this is what the official one is, uh, with nice vector arrows for displacement. And you get the idea of uh, equal spacing, but medium and then uh, equal spacing and short, and then equal spacing and long being slow, medium, and fast. So an alternative way besides just the data and uh, the motion diagrams to express this is using a graph. And this is something that we've done all before, but we're going to look at this very specifically with motion and start applying rules, uh, mostly relate, relating to the slope um, to, uh, to deal with things. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to zoom in, I uh, have my data uh, right there, 60, 120, 180, 200, okay. And for a little bit I'm going to pause here and I'm going to fill this in and I'll be right back. Okay, I have my data plotted now um, and I can see the individual points. Uh, but the point is, is that, you know, the person walking to school exists in the world in between those points. So what we do is we can um, we can create a, um, you know, basically a continuum in between, and we can what we call interpolate between the lines. So let's try to do that um, as best we can. So uh, let's see if I get this. And then, okay. All right. So if I interpret it, interpolate between the lines, I see that okay, I have continuous motion here to begin with. All right. Something like that. And then um, at three seconds is when that rate changes. And we saw that from the previous one. That was basically us saying it slowed down. All right, and then at six seconds, the rate changed again. We went up here. Okay. So the idea is that um, we represented the data using um, the uh, information, um, both with the individual data points and the overall trend. And what we'll be doing now is analyzing that that trend basically. So here we have our three representations. We have our raw data here, we have our uh, motion diagram, and then we have our graph. Okay. So what we're going to do is really concentrate on the graphing part this time and how we can bring out the same concepts that we have down here in our motion diagram uh, in a graph. And the number one tool that we're going to use when we analyze graphs is the slope. Um, slope will tell us, a slope is basically rate of change. Remember rise over run, or y-axis over x-axis. Um, a 
like to say rise over run in this class because our rise or our y axis happens to be position, which is the symbol x, and that gets confusing. So I say rise over run. Okay. So um, on a position versus time graph, and that's one of the first things you need to look at is what is this graph? It's a position versus time, right? On position versus time, the faster speed corresponds to a steeper slope. It's a higher rate of change in position, right? And so um, I have that same story if I look at here, if I look at my, um, if I look at my information from before, I have that same story. I see right here I have a uh, low slope, or say a medium slope, right, something like that, uh, for that first segment. But the second segment has a lower slope, right? So a lower slope corresponds to a, a would be a, uh, a slower speed, right? And then the slope gets higher again, okay? And then that means a faster speed. So this means that medium, slow, and fast, just by looking at the slopes. And the same way I had to look at the data table to find that, or the motion diagram. So I can actually find the number values also. So if I look here, you know, we have a general idea of slope of, um, you know, medium, slow, and fast, but on the bottom here I can actually do a rise of a run, the rise being, you know, a delta x, which in this case is, these are my values here, so this is my rise, divided by my run right here. And at any time, I can find uh, a numerical value uh, pulling off that information from the graph, right? And the slope of the object's position at the versus time is the object's velocity. So this tells me that the velocity, these are odd, um, <coughs> odd units, but uh, 300 meters per three minutes or 100 meters per minute. Okay, so the key here is that if I'm looking at a position versus time, and again, always look here first, position, position, okay? Um, you can determine the position by just reading it on the graph. So if I just said, what's the position at five seconds? You can come right here and kind of trace up and say, okay, my position is roughly um, 210 or something else like that. I think the actual value was 220. Um, and I can just read that off the graph. I can determine velocity by evaluating the slope at any segment or any, at any point. So I can find the slope of this. I can find the slope of this interval, right? The slope of this interval, at, you know, as we saw down here. Okay, that tells me uh, the magnitude of that slope tells me what your speed is. And really what the last thing comes, I can determine direction by looking at the sign of the slope. So again, a... Um, so, for example, down at the bottom, I'll draw this, um, that, you know, if I have a slope like this, right, um, <coughs> that's a positive slope. That means on a position versus time graph, that its position is increasing. So that could be going to the right, um, that could be going uh, up, you know, it could be going east, you know, it could be going north, whatever it is, right, my position is increasing in that case. Um, if I have a slope that is like this, then that slope is decreasing. That means its position is going from a high position up here to a low position, you know, whatever. And so it's basically going to the left, uh, it's going down, you know, going west, going south, you know, whatever the, the term will be. So positive slope means positive velocity, negative slope means negative velocity. So what we want to do now is look at this and say, how can we get our um, get a little bit more information, how, or how can we get a velocity versus time graph from our position versus time? So we have position versus time. We want to take it into a velocity versus time. So we got to think about what's going on. We said, okay, we can get our velocity from the slope and the uh, direction um, of the travel. Um, so what I did here, so I said, okay, if I look at this and I change this to seconds instead of minutes, so basically this is, you know, for every one of these, this is, um, instead of two minutes, this is 120, this is 240, so on, so on, and if I look at that with seconds, and I can get the idea that the first interval right here, uh, that slope is one meter per second, the second interval, that slope is 0.4, and then the third interval is 1.7, and I just found those uh, offline, and 
and got those values in. So that means that for time equals um, 0 to 2 minutes, or 3 minutes right here, this right here was a slope of 1 meter per second. All right, that means it has a positive 1 meter per second velocity. All right, so that it, it corresponds right here. So it says for 0 to 3 seconds, I have a positive 1 meter per second velocity. My second interval had a slope of 0 0.4 meters per second uh, for between 3 and 6, which also means that between 3 and 6 I had a constant, and that's the other thing, it's constant during this time, a constant uh, 0.4 meter per second uh, uh, velocity, and that's positive. And then here, this last one, I have a, um, I think it's about a yeah, 1.7 meter per second uh, positive velocity. And again, so I've just taken this graph right here and constructed a velocity versus time graph from that. And these little dots right here just mean that it's instantaneous. In, in the way that it, it travels, uh, that it changes the velocity, sorry. And now that we know how to go from position versus time to velocity versus time, we can now practice going backwards. Basically, how do we go from a velocity versus time to a position versus time? And there's going to be two methods, and this, will, this one we'll talk about the first method we have. Basically, we're going to look and predict the slope, and it's kind of like backward sloping, right? Um, so what this tells me right here is that um, the slope of the position versus time down at the bottom, it will have a one positive one meter per second slope, right? Because remember, the slope of the position versus time is the velocity, right? So it's going to have a slope of one positive one meter per second. And it's going to have that for an interval of 0 to 15 seconds. Right? From here to here, it has this, this value right here. And it's constant, right? So I need to draw down here a constant 1 meter per second slope. Well, that's actually an easy one. So um, if I start here at 0, 0, that means it's also a point five five and a point at 10, 10, and a point at 15, 15. I can draw that one. Okay, that's, that's not so hard for me. Okay. So I just created that first uh, segment there. Now, from 15 uh, seconds to 20 seconds, it needs to have a negative 3 meter per second slope. Right? So this right here, negative 3 meter per second slope. So first of all, negative is going to be downhill. It's going to be like this, right? So this is a negative slope. So I'm going to be going like that. And it has to be a rate of 3 meters per second. So basically it has to drop 3 meters, 3, on, three values of the, um, uh, the y-axis every 1 second that it goes on. So after, you know, basically after 1 second, it, it goes from 15 meters right here. Um, it, after 1 second, it'll go to 12. After 2 seconds, it'll be at uh, 9. After 3, so on and so on. And so basically after 5 seconds, the interval between here and here, it's now dropped 15 meters. So now using just the slopes that I've had, which was 1 meter per second and then negative 3 meters per second, I found out that this object here, whatever this is, um, you know, basically started off at 0. Right? It traveled in a positive direction for 15 meters and then came back and ended up back at its origin just by using the um, the values of velocity from and reconstructing the slope that we had before. Okay, so method one was to use a slope and uh, kind of you know, sorry, recreate the slopes using the velocity values. Uh, method two is going to be something called uh, area under the curve. So area under the curve. Um, so essentially, we're going to be looking at um, the uh, the velocity versus time graphs, right, right here. And we're going to be looking at those and trying to analyze them by uh, finding simple areas and keeping track of that. So let's 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 get a little bit conceptual here, and I'm going to zoom in so we can see specifically here. Um, the one thing we have to keep in mind is that our, our one thing that uh, equation that we have so far is uh, velocity. We said that velocity is equal to delta x over time.
time. Okay, so velocity equals delta x over time, and delta x being a change in position, which is really what a position versus time graph shows you, a change in position over time. So what we're going to do is we are going to uh, rearrange this one. We're going to re rearrange this equation and solve for delta x. So what do we have? We have velocity times time equals delta x. All right, so I just rearrange that no issue. So if I have a velocity and I have a time, if I multiply those together then I will get a displacement. So let's go back to here. Now I told you we're going to take the area under the curve. So basically from the zero point uh, to whatever the curve is, in this case it's not really a curve, it's just a straight line. Um, so if I want that area of a rectangle, it's easy, it's just base times height, uh, with my height being this velocity value, right, which happens to be a height of positive one, you know, meter per second. Okay, uh, and what's my base? My base right here that is a fifteen seconds. Okay, that's my base, or delta t or whatever. Okay, so if I multiply those two together to find my area, it's going to be one meter per second. Again, that's positive, and that's going to be multiplied by 15 seconds. All right, so that creates a, um, that says, okay, well, that is the same thing as positive 15 meters. So basically what that has just now told me is that in this first interval right here, uh, from 0 to 15 seconds, the object has traveled 15 meters. I took my velocity, which was constant here, and uh, multiplied it by my time, and I just found that it traveled 15 meters. So what I'm going to do is take that information down here to my plot. So I say, okay, uh, after 15 seconds right here, uh, the object has traveled 15 meters. So right about there. So, okay. And then I can connect um, those lines. I know that's not a straight line, but you get the idea. Um, okay, and so I have that, and now I can look at my second interval. My second interval, one is going to be below, see this right, the below the zero point. So my zero point is right here, right? So it's below it, so it's going to have to be a negative value. And we're going to keep track of that because it's very, very important. All right, I take this area, base times height. Um, so what is my uh, height? Well, my height is this, which is negative 3 meters per second. Okay, negative 3 meters per second. My base right here is 20 minus 15, so my base is 5 seconds. That's, that's how long that side is. All right, so I take my area, base times height, negative uh, 3 meters per second, okay, times 5 seconds, and I get negative 15 meters per, oh, sorry, incorrect, negative 15 meters. Okay, the negative is important in this case, because now it tells me that uh, this has gone in the negative direction 15 meters during these five seconds in between 15 and 20 seconds so I now take that information down low and it says in the interval between 15 and 20 seconds it has lost 15 meters or it's gone negative 15 meters which means it's gone back to my zero point back to my origin All right I can connect that and I can connect oops so I got some issues there um, again, connect that like this. Come on. Draw. There you go. Connect it like this. Okay, so now I've reconstructed my position versus time graph using just the area under the curve. Okay, and then the one thing I really have to keep track of is positives, sorry, positives and negatives. That's very, very important for this. Now, one thing to note um, is that uh, if there was a slightly different situation. Uh, let's try to draw something like that. Um, let's try to draw, and actually I'll 
go down to the bottom of the page because I want to make um, something. Let's say that it is a uh, velocity versus time graph uh, that looks like uh, this. Um, so let's say it goes like this and then down like that and then like that. Uh, if I have to do an area under the curve for this one, um, so this first section right here, I can find that area, and first of all, it's going to be above the zero line, so this is going to be positive, um, and that is a triangle. So what's the equation for a triangle? That's going to be one half, one half my base. Mm, not working very well. Sorry, uh, one half my base times my height. Okay. Um, okay, so that's gonna I can find that using the information. Uh, and then I have this object down here, right? So on the, on the lower. First of all, it's going to be negative. Uh, I don't remember, you know, because basically... Uh, I don't remember my shapes very well. I don't... Is that a rhombus? Is it a whatever? I don't, I don't know. But I can take this area either way. Uh, what I'm going to do is split this into two things. I'm going to split this into a triangle. And I'm going to split this into... Uh, a rectangle. So I have a triangle and here, it's negative, and a rectangle right there. So I can find that area of the triangle and the area of that, add those together, they're both negative, and then see how it goes. Okay. So this slide here is a reminder of um, basically what we're doing is what you've done before in math classes, but now we're just applying it to kind of the physics world, right? So um, basically we have a, anytime that you see a straight line in a position versus time graph, that means uniform motion, right? That's what we've been talking about. Uh, uniform motion, as a reminder, is no change in speed or velocity. So basically not speeding up, not slowing down, not changing directions, anything else like that. Um, so basically this slope, if I got here, let's say the slope at this point is this, the slope at this point is this, the slope at this point is this, right? Um, and so that slope stays the same the entire time. Uh, in, in math, we use y equals mx plus b, but in physics, you know, we're, we're more like, you know, final position, x equals, you know, velocity times time plus initial position. And that's exactly the same thing where, you know, velocity represents here the slope, right? You can kind of see that and then... Um, um, so it's the difference between math and, and physics. We just have a little bit different symbols, and we're applying it in a situation. Now what we see here is a position graph of something that is non-uniform motion, right? So this is speeding up or slowing down. Anytime you see a curve on a position versus time graph, right, that means that there is a change in speed, a change in velocity. And what we can see is if I do that same thing like I did before, uh, here, I say, what's the slope at this point? Well, I can do a tangent line right there, right? And you can see it basically it starts off zero or at near zero. If I keep going forward in time, then I do a tangent line right here. Uh, that is now uh, a higher slope. And if I continue this on, keep doing tangent lines, my, my slope eventually basically gets higher and higher. So the idea is that if I look at this, my slopes get higher and higher. Remember, slope means velocity um, for position versus time graphs. So what is this saying is that my velocity is increasing. So it is speeding up. So this, this object is speeding up. All right. uh, in math class, you'd have some kind of equation like this, quadratic. And in physics, this is what we'll be using. This is actually one of our kinematic equations we'll be talking about in a little bit. But the key thing... All right, if you see a curve in a position versus time graph, then it is either speeding up or slowing down. If I had to show this as a speeding up, I'm sorry, this is a speeding up graph. If I had to show it as a slowing down graph, this is what it would look like. It would start off with a high velocity, a high slope, and then that slope would eventually tail off, you know, to zero or something else like that. All right, so this is how we kind of are going to think about it. Uh, when we uh, deal with uh, non-uniform motion. So as I said before on this graph uh, on the upper right here, you know we have this changing, we have this changing slope and this changing velocity that we go you know along the way, right if I do my tangent lines, right? 
And I can see that, okay, my average velocity basically is given by just my, you know, I could say well, what's going on here. Uh, my average velocity is my, you know, displacement. Uh, basically, uh, it's my, you know, final position here minus my initial position. Um, and I could find an average velocity from that. So basically, if I said, okay, it's gone uh, 16 meters and it's taken... Uh, I'll just make it easy on myself. I, it doesn't line up, but let's say it's 16 meters and it's taken two seconds. That means it's gone eight meters per second as an average velocity. Change in position divided by change in time. I could do that. That just gives me an average velocity. But we know from these red lines that the actual speed actually starts off slow and then increases as we did on the previous thing, because that's what our slope does. Our slope starts off zero or slow and then increases. So the idea is during the trip, there's different speeds than the average overall thing. And that's what we happen, that's what happens when we get in our car and we go, you know, travel somewhere. We have, you know, red lights, we have, you know, green lights, we have, you know, interstates, we have whatever. We have all these different speeds, even though those are different from the actual average velocity of the entire trip that it, you know, I went 50 miles in you know, one hour, so I have an average velocity of 50 miles an hour, even though I was really speeding down the interstate for a while at, you know, 85. So what we have is um, we're going to, you know, call something out and say that we're going to have something called instantaneous velocity along the way. Average velocity, you know, I can look at the beginning and end or any kind of two points, and I can have an average velocity to them, but I can have an instantaneous velocity um, uh, along the way, um, which means at any time I can say I'm going 50 miles per, per hour due east. Right? So the only way that we can actually find that in this class without calculus is by taking a tangent line from a graph. All right? so, um, so essentially in this case, uh, this dot that you see here is basically the question is what is the velocity at... Um, you know, when time is equal to where that dot is, 0 0.75 seconds. So that's essentially the question. So is it 0 0.75 seconds right here? What's the, uh, what's the velocity? Okay. And so the only way we can do that is going at that time and taking a tangent line. So a tangent line is created right here. And you just kind of, you have to kind of estimate it. Um, it's a little tough, it's not the easiest thing to do, and again, it's, it's a way of dancing around calculus, but um, you take a tangent line and then you find the slope of the tangent line. So here they've taken a, uh, two points, they took um, this right here, right, they took this point um, right here, and they took the original point right here, um, or maybe, sorry, they didn't take that point, uh, they took uh, this point here. And they said basically, um, if I want to know the slope, it's rise, which is my delta x, divided by my run, which is this time interval between 1.5 and 0.5. And um, so basically it's one second, you know, base, or sorry, one second run, and, and five, uh, sorry, <laughs> eight meters uh, rise. And so it has a instantaneous velocity of eight, you know, divided by one, so of eight meters per second. So at that, at that time, at this time 0 0.75, it is going exactly 8, positive 8 meters per, per second. Any instant past that is probably be going faster. Any instant before that, you know, is probably going slower because the slope changes, or the tangent, slope of the tangent line changes. All right, so this is a tough one to actually pull off the information uh, but it's the only way that we can handle instantaneous velocity in this class. Okay, now we're going to add a third term to our knowledge base. Uh, and this third term is called acceleration. So what acceleration is, acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. Now remember, velocity is the rate of change of position. How fast am I changing position? Right, so acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. So they kind of build on one another. Uh, we can kind of start over again, and actually, let's let's go on down the page here. So you know, acceleration is the change in velocity divided by change of time. That's the rate of change, basically. Uh, change of velocity means final velocity minus initial velocity, and change of time is just the two time intervals. 
Um, so essentially, my velocity is up on top with uh, meters per second, and my seconds are on bottom from time. So what we end up having is a unit that is meters per second per second, right? Um, so per second, whatever. And so what we actually write it as is meters per second squared. Okay, so that's how we write our unit for uh, acceleration, meters per second squared. All right, so let's look at conceptually, as we have before, with um, position and both velocities. So come up here, we have uh, a couple representations. First representation, we have data. All right, I have time here along the way in seconds, and I have two, um, two cars, and i got to figure out which one um, accelerates faster. Right? So which one has a greater change in velocity per unit time, which is essentially meters per second squared. Because right? there's a difference between acceleration. This is one of the concept issues, is that there's a difference between acceleration and like top speed. Right? So something can achieve a top speed, but take a long time to get to that top speed. So think about a bullet train. Right? A bullet train takes a while to get to its top speed, but once it gets its top speed, it's fast. All right, a Corvette, on the other hand, you know, probably go from zero to sixty in a very short amount of time, and it has great acceleration, uh, but it's not going to have the same top speed as that bullet train. Okay, so I do the same thing here, right? We looked at this when the student was walking to school. Uh, we looked and we said, okay, well, what about our kind of intervals from zero to one second? So this thing uh, increased speed or increased velocity of three meters per second. Okay. From one to two seconds, it increased from three to six, right? And then from two to three, from six to nine, and then from three to four, from nine to twelve. So, it it every second, it looks like it's increasing three meters per second every second, right? So it looks like it's it's increasing the speed three meters per second every second, per second. Uh, the Corvette, on the other hand, I look at these intervals, and I see 7.5. I also see 7.5 difference between here and 7.5 here. So basically, the Corvette is going, is increasing its speed at 7.5 meters per second for every second. So that's the rate of change of velocity. And of course, this just means, um, you know, three on this side, three meters per second you know, we would say this is 3 meters per second squared, and we would say this as 7.5 meters per second squared. All right, so we're looking at, we're finding acceleration. And this is constant acceleration, which is also something that we um, can only handle in this class. All right, if I go to this representation, I have a graph. Um, so I have velocity here, and this is one of our key things. First thing we do is look at that thing, say, is that position, velocity, or acceleration? Okay, I have velocity versus time, um, and so what I have here is, is that the slope of these are no longer velocity related. It's the slope of a velocity versus time graph. The, the rate of change, which is slope, is now the acceleration. So I can look at these and determine which one accelerates faster by looking at the slope. All right, and that's going to key in. So this one right here, it's sonic. Right, has a lower slope than the Corvette. All right, and then we just found that up top. We said, that, okay, that basically the Sonic increased its rate at three and a half, sorry, three meters per second uh, every second, and the Corvette increased its uh, rate at um, seven and a half meters per second every second. And that's what these graphs also show. And that same data is on this graph here. All right, so the key thing here is that. If you are given a velocity versus time graph, right, the slope of a velocity versus time is a acceleration, right? So I can look at two things with velocity, and uh, velocity versus time and find out, you know, what's their relative acceleration, right? Just as I did before with position versus time, I looked at the slope and said, what's their velocities? Okay, acceleration is a vector, right? So we actually have to keep track of things 
uh, as we do with vectors, right? So it has a magnitude and a direction. And this is where acceleration gets difficult conceptually, right? Because the direction can be opposite of the direction of motion. And hopefully by the end of the slide you can, you can see that. Okay. We'll take these situation by situation. First, we'll start with this one. The object is moving to the right, so it has a positive, a positive velocity right there. And it is speeding up. Okay, it's increasing its speed. I'm moving to the right. I hit my accelerator on my car. Right? So basically I am accelerating in the same direction that I am moving. Okay? Um, if there was a graph here, you can see it kind of faint. You know, basically it would look like this, you know, with the idea that my velocity, this is velocity versus time, uh, my velocity starts at some, you know, value here, it increases, and it increases in a positive way. So it has a positive slope, which means it has a positive acceleration. Velocity was 1 meter per second, and then it goes to 2 meters per second, and they're both positive. Right, so it was going at 1 meter per second to the right, now it's going 2 meters per second to the right. The slope of this is positive, the slope is the acceleration, um, and so, yeah, that gives me a value too. I could also, you know, do it mathematically. Again, I, I showed you the, you know, acceleration is the final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time. Uh, so if my final velocity is bigger, then my initial velocity, and they're both positive, right, then this will always be a positive value, all right? So, so this is an easy one, right? If I'm going to the right and I want to go faster to the right, I accelerate to the right. Okay, this is our easiest example. Let's shift over here. <clears throat> if I'm moving to the left, right, and I'm speeding up to the left, right? I'm increasing my speed to the left, which is, you know, my velocity is negative, uh, then essentially I am accelerating to the left. Also easy to think about, right? I want to go faster to the left. I'm already going to the left. I accelerate to the left. Now it's just I'm driving, you know, down the highway at, um, you know, west or to the left, whatever you want to say, and I increase my speed along that direction, okay? So I actually have a, you know, acceleration vector that's to the left. Same direction as motion, okay? Now, so graphically, if I want to display this, I have this right here. I have velocity and I have time. So I have velocity and then time. Um, so it's a negative velocity. I was going, let's say this is negative one meter per second. And then I increase my speed in the negative direction to negative 2 meters per second. Okay? So I have increased my overall speed in the, in, to the direction to the left. Right? So I'm going faster to the left. But the key thing is by going left, I'm talking about negative. Okay? Um, so uh, if I actually look at the slope of this, what's the slope? Uh, tell me, well, that slope tells me acceleration. And that acceleration, right, uh, so in this case, it's a negative slope, so that means it's a negative acceleration. A negative acceleration means, so ne negative acceleration, negative slope, negative acceleration means it's accelerating to the left, which I already have up here, right? So if you're going to the left and you want to go faster to the left, you accelerate to the left. Mathematically, pull this equation up again. Final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time. If I'm moving to the left, those velocities are going to be negative. So let's say, like, I plug it in, like the equation I, or the example I had, um, that I was going, I uh, was going uh, negative one meter per second, and I was going negative two. So if I want to know my acceleration, it would be final velocity is negative 2 minus my initial velocity, negative 1, divided by my time. Well, I don't really care what that is right now. So um, 
I just want to look at these positives and negatives here. So this is negative 2 minus negative 1, which is the same thing as plus 1. So I have an acceleration that is negative. And it will always be negative if um, basically my final velocity is a um, um, higher, well, I don't say higher, but a more negative value than my initial velocity. So these two are easier ones to think about. But let's get a little bit harder one here. We'll look at this one. An object is moving to the right, so it has a positive velocity, and it's slowing down. Okay, so it's moving to the right. I can see my motion diagram there, but it's slowing down. All right, so uh, let's go first to the diagram here. That's right, the graph. So I have velocity and time. And then essentially I have, uh, I was going, let's say, 2 meters per second, and then I slow down to 1 meter per second. So plus 2 and plus 1. Okay? So the slope of a velocity versus time is acceleration. So this tells me I have a negative slope. Right? It's a downward slope, so I have a negative slope. That means my, that means my acceleration is negative. Negative slope, negative acceleration. And again, direction-wise, that tells me right, that my acceleration is to the left. So here's where it gets interesting. If I'm moving to the right and slowing down, that means I'm accelerating to the left. And the easiest way to think about this is your brake. You, or in your car, you have an accelerator, which is the right pedal, which helps you accelerate in the direction that you're going. You have a decelerator or a brake that accelerates you in the opposite direction. It slows you down, right? And that's what uh, this is showing, that if you ever slow down, your acceleration is in the opposite direction. What this showed you over here is that if you are speeding up, then you're accelerating in the same direction. This says if you're, if you're slowing down, then you're accelerating in the opposite direction. Mathematically, I can also do that same thing, acceleration, final velocity, minus initial velocity divided by time. I'm not really interested about time because that's always going to be a positive number. I want to look at positives and negatives. So if my final velocity, right, in this case was positive 1, minus my initial velocity, which was positive 2. That's supposed to be a 2, okay. I don't really care about time. All right, so positive 1 minus positive 2 will always give you a negative. So if this final, velo final velocity is less than my initial velocity, that will always give me a negative value. Again, four different ways to kind of look at things. And again, we have the same thing here. If I'm moving to the left, it's a negative velocity. Uh, so what we were saying now is basically we have an acceleration to the right. Anytime you're slowing down, the acceleration is in the opposite direction. And I could look at that here the same way and say, okay, here's my, here's my graph, uh, velocity, and time. And I have started off at a high negative velocity, and I've decreased it um, to be a less negative. Right? And so, again, this is a positive slope, right? positive slope. And the next slide will summarize this all in one chart. So here's the idea. This table summarizes everything, but the key thing, the key thing is that if you are, if your acceleration is in the same direction as your velocity, which this one is the case, and this one is the case, you are speeding up. Okay? You're speeding up in whatever direction you're going. This one's positive because my velocity is positive. This one's negative because my velocity is negative. If you are accelerating in the opposite direction to your velocity, you are always slowing down. All right? So these right there, you are always slowing down. Slowing down, slowing down. And you're slowing down in the direction of your velocity also. And these are, the last three are kind of obvious. If you're at rest to begin with and you accelerate to the right, guess what? You're going to speed up to the right. 
If you're at rest to begin with and you accelerate to the left, you're going to speed up to the left. And if you're at rest and you do no acceleration, then you remain at rest. Okay, so I, I like to think of the car, you know, as an accelerator and a decelerator. Accelerator it will accelerate you in the same direction. An acceler a decelerator will accel accelerate you in the opposite direction, which is basically slowing down.